Yo, what's good people? It's Jay Cactus, and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to make catchy melodic melodies. So I'm thinking I'm going to use the guitar, but I'll see which instrument I want to use once I start working on a chord progression. And yo, if anyone hasn't seen it yet, I just dropped a crazy music video with my guy Skinny Flex. If you don't know who he is, he's a huge artist in Spain. He's been killing it for a while now. And yeah, I managed to land a subscriber replacement as well. He goes by ST. It's a beat that I made in one of my collab videos, so it just felt sick to bring the project to life. So I'll leave a link to that in the description. And the other thing is, we're getting real close to 75. 5k subscribers and i'm going to be doing a giveaway when i hit that milestone the giveaway is going to include the adam audio t8v monitors which are the ones that i currently use and there's going to be some more vsts and goodies to give out too so if you're not subscribed already definitely consider it if you want to get involved in the giveaway and yeah let's get into the video so i'm starting off with a guitar it's just a strummed acoustic guitar in contact and i'm picking a scale like f minor we can always change the scale after but usually i find that when i'm using stuff like d minor d sharp minor that's when i get those dark vibes but usually when i bring it up to like f f sharp g i tend to get a nicer vibe and really you can start off with something as simple as a chord so i'm just skipping every other note here and that's giving me an F minor chord. But because we're using a guitar, we're gonna wanna bring the notes out. So I'm gonna find a chord that I like first, and then I'll start moving the notes around. So quite like that. So now what I could do is bring some of these notes out so they're not playing at the same time. Alright, so I like the sound of that chord. I'm just gonna cut the end off there. So I just brought the notes out because that's how a guitar would be played. All the notes wouldn't be played at the same time. And there was no signs behind the other notes that I was adding. I literally just started with the chords and then I was adding some other notes in until I found a sound that I like. So now if you want to make a catchy melody, the trick with catchy melodies is not to change the rhythm too much or not even to change the notes too much. Most important thing is the rhythm though. So see how we've got these notes lined up like this. Whatever chord we choose next, we want that same kind of rhythm. So to start off, what I could do is just copy this across. And I'm not going to stick with this because I've used this progression so many times. But what you could do is just bring this down five notes. And then you could just change some of the notes that are out of the scale. Unless it sounds good. So that don't even sound bad, even though that D is out of the scale. So you could even just have a melody like that. That would be real catchy. Another way of doing it would be to bring this across, copy that, and just have each one play twice. So like this. And that's a 1-5 progression. And what I mean by that is the 1 is the F because it's the first note in the scale. And then if you go up 5, C is the 5th. All I'm doing is going from F to C. And that's like the easiest way to get a catchy melody. But let's try and find something else. Maybe we could bring it down here. Let's just see. Let's try and bring it up to G. See how this sounds. Could maybe move this down. So yeah, even coming back to F there sounds pretty cool. So I'm just adding a little bit of variation at the end. And then we could add in some bass notes. So we could for now just follow the root notes. So I've just got F, C, G, C. So I'm kind of happy with this progression right now. And look, I was using notes that are outside of the scale that I picked originally. But the chances are that these notes will fit within a different scale. And I think it's C minor. So let's just have a look. Yeah, so when I selected C minor, all these notes fit within that scale. So once you set a scale, it doesn't mean that you have to stick to the notes within that. Just make sure that it sounds good. All right, so I'm happy with the chords now. I'm going to start applying effects soon. But for now, I want to find a counter melody. All right, so for the counter melody, when it gets to this stage, usually I'll just play the chords and just figure something out on the keyboard. Like, again, there's no science behind it. You just gotta go by feeling, just play a few notes and see what sounds right to you. The trick is to make it easy to remember. So I don't wanna go too wild with the counter melody. It can just be something simple to layer on top of it. So it could be something like. So it's not too busy, you know? It could just be something simple as that. But let's see what else we could find. Maybe just 
turn down the notes, the velocity of some. So like that. I didn't like the sound of that because it was playing too high. And then just to add a tiny bit of variation, what I could do is copy this, copy the chords as well. And then in the count melody, just make a tiny change. All right, so what I can do now is just link these to the same channel. I'm, I'm gonna apply the same effects on them anyway, so I might as well link them. I'm gonna put an EQ on there. All right, now I wanna add on some RC20. I'd say my favorite preset in RC20 is just the Vinyl 3. What I usually do is change the distortion to air, just bring it down a little bit and bring the noise down. I don't like too much noise in the melodies. And not a lot of wobble. And then I always add Valhalla Vintage Verb. Use one around about, I don't know, maybe 10%. And I'm also gonna add just a little bit of delay, just giving us some space. I can set that to ping pong mode. And just a quick idea to show you. I'm gonna keep that first one, but if you wanted something a little bit simpler, or if you wanted to add some variation, what you could do is take out these other notes. So take out these end notes and just stop the chord here. And this is a trick that LLB showed me. So some VSTs, like good guitar VSTs, will have notes like this, where it's like you're hitting the guitar or stopping the strings. And then you can play with the velocity just to make it more realistic. So just a quick idea if you wanted to switch things up. All right, and another thing I want to add to the effect chain is some chorus. Usually chorus sounds pretty nice on guitars. And I like the chorus in elements. So I'm just going to throw that on and bring the mix level back. But what you could also do at this point is experiment with changing the instrument. But I kind of like the way that the guitar sounds, but maybe for the counter melody, I don't have to use a guitar for that. So let's see if we can find something else. So this sound sounds sick. Just something a little bit different. So I like this preset in Shaper Box. And I could just make that a little bit more spacious. Like that. So now I want to layer the main chords with something else. So I'm just going to copy these chords. And let's just clone contact because I might use that same bank. But you know what? Instead of contacts, I'm going to use expand. I haven't used expand for a while. And the pads in here are sick. Yeah, I quite like this one. I think this one fits the vibe, even though it's called spooky. I think it just sits nice underneath it. All right, so next what I'm hearing now is some vocals. So I could use something like arcade, some contact banks, but I'm gonna look through Splice. All right, so I found some vocals in Splice and what I usually do is just match the BPM first. So I'm just gonna go fit to tempo. I already know the BPM of the sample, so it's just 120. And it's in C minor, which is what we're working in. So I don't need to change the pitch, but like I process all of my vocals. What I usually do is add little alter boy and I either play with a formant or I'll pitch it up a full octave or a bit of both. All I wanna do is text you. So it might sound quite squeaky now, but if I fill it right out, it might sound good. Maybe it's a bit too much. And then I usually wash it out with some reverb too. All right, I'm going to find some more vocal chops because I think that's too much for this one. All right, I found some more vocal chops and these are just more like one shots. They're already in C minor and I think these are going to work better. I could still add them to the same mixer channel though. So I don't even really need to do much to these. Let's just try and reverse this one. So I'll make that unique and hit reverse. All right, and I'm going to add some delay to these as well. And right, let's try a little autoboy back on, just up an octave. And what I could also do is add crystallizer. This is just going to add a bit of a reverse delay. Let's take the main delay off, actually. So I think that sound is sick. Uh, one more thing I can try is I'm going to render out this vocal. 
and I just want to wash it out a little bit more. Now, if I open this in Edison, what I'm going to do is downsample it. So if I go to edit properties, the sample rate is 44,100 and we could just try bringing that down. Let's just try something like 9,000 and resample. It's kind of bringing the quality down, but that's just going to help like fill it out a bit more. Let's try like 5,000. So I might even prefer that. Well, let's try with the counter melody. And now I think the counter melody is clashing with the vocals. So what I could do is just alternate them. So when the vocals are in, I'll have the counter melody out and then switch that around. So yeah, I think I'm happy with the melody now. We've got chords, we've got a counter melody, we've got a pad, we've got some vocals. So what, four layers? You don't really need to add more than that. So yeah, let's just see how it sounds with drums. Let's try use a snap. I'm getting like R&B vibes from this one. So instead of using the same drums that I always do, let's try a snap. And the pattern just needs to be simple for this one. And then delay the last one. leaving a bit of space. So I'm just leaving space where the snaps are. All right, so for the 808, I might use something like this. I don't want a long distorted 808, I just want something kind of short. Just changed the eight away. I think it was sounding a little bit off. Maybe I could get an open heart in here as well. And I'm going to increase the attack so it's not as sharp. So I pretty much finished the beat and the drums weren't really the main part of the tutorial. So I'm just going to finish what I'm making. I'll arrange everything and then show you the outcome. All right, so finished mixing and arranging the beat and I've made quite a few changes, mainly to the structure though, because originally I was going to have that full guitar melody, but now for the verse and the intro, I've just left the chords. So I'll just play it and talk you through it all. So the chords are down octave here. The vocals come in. part in the hook and I've saved that sim for the second part we got the padding though and you know this is two eight weight patterns and then it's the verse so this is the second eight weight pattern I just wanted to leave the verse like, as open as possible for an artist. And I think the chords was all it needed. And then just to add a count melody every now and again. And then for the bridge, I've just 
brought the chords back down an octave and added the vocals. And I think it's just the same as the intro. Took the reverb off the snap, apart from this last one. Now I've got the synth in both of them. So similar how to, or similar how I structure all of my beats. And I feel like that R&B perk there just instantly gives it that R&B vibe. So I hope you liked the video and I hope you're feeling the beat. And like I said earlier, we're getting real close to hitting 75k subscribers, which is mad. So I appreciate everyone supporting the channel. I'm going to be doing a big giveaway at 75k. I've got some Adam Audio TAVs to give away, some VSTs, drum kits, all the usual goodies. So if you want to get involved, make sure you subscribe to the channel. I'll be announcing full details on it soon. And yeah, once again, thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time.